Sweet oh, oh, squid. 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 Oh, a first Japanese sticker. Woo <laughs> the Izo brown bear, the most fierce wild animal in Hokkaido. You can't really get better nature than that, can you? We're wondering if that person there didn't take the advice or do it, and that's all that's left. The most easterly point of Japan. After collecting and unpacking our ship belongings, we finally feel like we've got to grips with van life here in Japan. <laughs> it's ice cream! Over the past week, we've discovered some of those things that make Japan's culture so unique. And after driving to the top of Japan's main island, we're all ready to get the ferry over to Japan's wilderness island of Hokkaido. You can't control the past, but you can control where you go next. Kirsten Hubbard. Okay, so they've just done an announcement. Getting on the boat. We have no idea what they just said. One waved us, one stopped us. What's happening, love? I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay. We're going. We're going. She's going to send me over to the right hand side. Ladies and gents, toilets. So they got these areas, little seating areas where you take your shoes off. Oh, they've got a section for women only. They've got a little, that you just go in and just like, take your shoes off. Take your shoes off and sit on the floor. That's great. Vending <laughs> machines. That's all right. So there you go, what an experience. So we've come onto one of the little seating areas. I'm pleased I bought my rabbit socks to keep my toes warm. We've spent the weekend chilling out here at this uh, little rest stop. The sun is shining. Um, it's going to be a beautiful little road trip we're going to do. But uh, we've had a great time here. The, uh, the guys at this rest, rest stop have been so welcoming to us. The chef and his wife in the little restaurant here. Great food. I wish service stations back home were like this. But also some local people stopped by. They even bought us little gifts and food parcels. We have a very nice gentleman <laughs> who has come over to give us some treats. And what, what have we got here? So we've got chocolate cookies. Country mom, choc choco rich, Dub double, double chocolate. Double chocolate. Ooh. And what's this? How do you say it? I don't know if you do it in Japanese, but I don't know if you Nice. We'll try them. This is the squid. Oh, squid. 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 If you drink alcohol, it's good. With a beer. We will buy alcohol so we can eat this one. Thank you, Nariyama. Thank you so much. The whole bag of stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my goodness, these guys brought us food. Everybody in Japan has just been so amazing. But before we hit the road this morning, I think we'll get the map on the side of the van and we'll show you our route for the week. Okay, so we're starting our adventures at the south of the island here. And then uh, we're going to be driving all the way around before heading through the very picturesque middle um, of Hokkaido heading all the way over to the National Park here um, and then we'll be heading down and finishing up at this point here which is Japan's most easterly point. We're, uh, we're excited to be uh, driving around Hokkaido because it's known as like one of the Japanese wilderness islands. Listen to that. <laughs> That's amazing! 
We're in the jungles. <laughs> you can definitely hear the uh, wild noises. And uh, we've been told that we can expect to see deers running across the road, foxes, and they have quite a big population of brown bears. Gazing out over the sea, I thought about all the wonderful people we've met on our travels and questioned, is it the people you meet on your travels that make a place so special or is it the place itself? I wondered what our lasting memory of Hokkaido would be, the epic wilderness or its people. Based on our first couple of days here, I'm not sure, maybe both. You see the people collecting their dinner out of the, uh, out of the rock pools maybe collecting seaweed or clams or something, I'm not sure. So one thing we haven't figured out yet is all these red arrows down the uh, side of the road, what they, what they mean. I'm not sure whether it's an evacuation route. Just passing a dairy farm and uh, we haven't seen cows for a while. In fact, we haven't seen any cows in Japan yet. So, uh, but apparently up here in Hokkaido, they have quite a big um, dairy uh, farming going on. And if they have dairy farms, they have ice cream. They do. We and cheese. Maybe they have really nice cheese. We should definitely check that out. There's still snow on the mountains. They're looking very high in the distance. <laughs> okay, wherever we go, we meet lovely people. But <laughs> this guy, this guy here, has just bought us a sticker of Hokkaido. Look at this. Look at this sticker. <laughs> sticker. So we're going to ask him to stick it on the van. Where we... Hold on. There. <laughs> okay, you have to put the sticker. Oh, <laughs> see. And he goes, Look oh, at that. Our first Japanese this. sticker. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Super! Arigato! Arigato gozaimasu! Hi! Hi! Hi. <laughs> Thank you! Look at that! Our first Japanese sticker! Woohoo! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Twelve o'clock, it's lunchtime. We're just heading down through a town in a minute. So we're gonna try and find something to eat. It's not a very big town. Looks like we're coming out the end already and we haven't seen any eateries yet. Okay, 7-Eleven. Trusty 7-Eleven. <laughs> Sometimes you drive past buildings and you have no idea what they are, but 7-Eleven uh, we know. They have all this uh, ready meals. Rice with different things, pastas. Oh, nice food there and there. And they heat it up for you, which is perfect. Marianne, you got macaroni cheese. I got macaroni cheese. I got tomatoes with mozzarella and basil and some fried chicken with green onion. I went for the Japanese chicken and seaweed rice. Bon appetit. Yeah, these are convenience stores, 7-Eleven, Lawson's, Family Mart. They make really good quick pit stops and they, uh, the ready meals that they have in there where they heat them up for you are perfect. Really, really nice. And you can get rid of your rubbish there and there. Sign up there say caution lightning advisory. Ooh, maybe we'll have a bit of exciting weather this afternoon. I think we have enough excitement in our lives. through the mountains we've just seen our first bear warning sign how exciting i cannot get over the landscape i feel like i've just entered jurassic park it literally looks like jurassic park okay we're still having massive discussions about <laughs> <laughs> all these arrows pointing down to the road and it's definitely not a tsunami warning or evacuation route because we're in the middle of, of land now. So I'm thinking maybe it's showing the edge of the road for snow plows. I've absolutely no idea. 
So if anybody knows what that is, please put a comment below. There you go, home for the night. Another Mishy roadside stop. I love these little roadside stations, they're perfect. There's a train carriage there, look. <laughs> and uh, we're right opposite a lovely field of rapeseed. It's like being back in Shropshire. <laughs> oh, it really is. Today is the day we're driving up through the north of Hokkaido. Um, but it's not a great day's weather today. It's looking very grey and very wet. But are we going to let that stop us? No! <laughs> no, we're not. We're pushing on. And uh, we can't, it's rainy season here uh, in Japan at the moment, and we can't wait for a nice sunny day because we have a boat booked um, in just over a week's time to go back to the mainland. And we're British. Rain doesn't bother us. <laughs> it's true. You can't break <laughs> us with rain. Hokkaido definitely has uh, lots and lots of agriculture. Uh, this region here is full of polytunnels and fields growing crops. And we've even seen dairy cows. And ice cream and cheese. <laughs> to be honest, even in the rain, this scenery looks absolutely amazing. And we're heading forward up there towards the mountains. Uh, you can see the clouds on top. I think it's gonna still be a beautiful drive today. It's gonna be epic. The greenery is still mind blowing. It's so intensely green here. Got another lightning advisory today. What is that? I don't know, but we haven't really seen any lightning though, no. despite seeing lots of those advisories. Well, if you're working one of those cranes, maybe you need to know, because they're like massive lightning conductors. Very good point. You can imagine, uh, I bet it's really hot here in the summer. Do you think they have lots of mosquitoes? Yes. <laughs> Looking at the jungle, all right, and the water. What is a bear sign? I can feel it, it's coming. It's coming. So we're just coming into the town of Ferrano. Sounds Italian. It does, and guess what? They do cheese and wine here. Who knew that Japan made wine? We're gonna go and see if we can buy some wine and cheese on the way through. So the sign in front says Ferrano skiing ground. You can see the ski slopes in the mountains. I also had no idea. Did you know that there was skiing in Japan? I, you know, gotta say, never thought of that one. Some of these gardens are amazing. There's a, there's definitely a lot of lupins out at the moment. A flower that I love. <laughs> Ferrano oh, cheese one factory. One Okay, let's go and see if they sell cheese. They've got cheese samples, you can try. That is the first time I've ever seen black cheese. What is that? I don't know. It tastes like brie. But it's black. Okay, killed two birds with one stone. We have cheese and a bottle of wine each. <laughs> so the reason that the, uh, the, the, the brie style cheese is black is because it's got squid ink in. That's the first. Yep, no. Okay. Had to stop and show you this. Look at that view. Paddy fields and snow-capped mountains in the distance. That's mad. There you go, blue pond. 
So yeah, we've arrived just south of the uh, town of Bay. This is where the famous Blue Lake is. Although on a day like today, where it's not sunny, it may not be that blue, but we'll find out. There you go. There is in fact a blue lake. It's blue. It's blue, even in this light. If you're thinking that the blue water looks so blue, it looks photoshopped. You're right, it does. But no, it hasn't been edited. Following the eruption of nearby Mount Tokachi in 1988, dams were built on the Bi River to protect the town from possible mudslides and the pond was born. Aluminium in the water from the nearby Shuragane Onsen mixed with river water seeped into the pond. It's the sunlight reflecting on the aluminium particles that makes it look blue. It's great coming to these places, it can be really busy, but I can see why. This water is just epically blue, like the prettiest turquoise you can see. And with the reflection of the mountains and the trees, makes it a really special place. But can you hear all the critters in the trees? We're just overwhelmed that we're A, in Japan, B, in such a tropical, lush place, and you're here with us. Thank you for coming. So we've come into the town of BI and uh, we're gonna go and find some lunch. It's lunch time. It's a curry shop. A curry shop? Oh, it smells like a oh, curry shop. Japanese curry. It smells good. <laughs> That was a seriously delicious curry lunch. Not something I expected to have in Japan curry, but um, they do have katsu curries and stuff, don't they? Yeah, we've been told by our son that we have to try katsu curry. <laughs> we've tried the curry there. I don't know whether it was katsu curry, but it was delicious. Slightly sweet, but really nice. And one thing this area is famous for, the surrounding areas, is flowers. You can see some on the display here. So we're gonna head out of town into the countryside and just see if there's any flowering this time of year. It's a little bit early for the season, but we might get lucky. I did see online that these uh, famous routes around here are actually all signposted. The only problem is they're all in Japanese. <laughs> yeah. The 14 kilometer patchwork road and the 18 kilometer panorama road are two of the most scenic routes in the area. The roads wind through the rolling hills and if you time it right, you'll see firsthand the brightly colored landscapes created by field after field of magically colored flowers. We haven't seen any so far apart from in the gardens. It's still pretty. <laughs> Very pretty. <laughs> No, there's no epic amounts, but the wildflowers alone are just lovely and the flowers that people have planted in their gardens are gorgeous too. Well, the flower thing didn't really work, but hey ho, unless you try, you never know. So now we're heading north and we're going to go uh, up to the north coast of Hokkaido. And amazingly, the sun is starting to come out, even though the weather forecast today was terrible. motorways with lupins all the way down the side <laughs> well, they are literally all the way along beautiful we've arrived in Abashiri <laughs> and uh, there is a rest stop about a kilometer from here we've made it right to the top of uh, Hokkaido to the other coastline which is long where, old drive. Long drive, long day. So we're gonna rest up tonight before we uh, head to the national park tomorrow. There you go, home for the night. Should go up there, wouldn't Yeah. Yeah, we can go, uh, go up there a little bit. <laughs> mm. 
not a bad rest stop, is it? Yeah. There you go. Nice to see. There is something magical about the smell of salt water, isn't there? Just like the sea air. It's lovely. Awesome. You, bought sticker. you bought a sticker. Oh, you bought a sticker. Because they've got bears here. The Izo brown bear. There you go. The most fierce wild animal in Hokkaido. We might see one tomorrow. I genuinely can't believe how clean the toilets are. We, uh, we had a good night's sleep here at this rest stop. It's quiet. They're, uh, they're really, really good, these rest stops. You'll always see a bank of vending machines selling uh, all kinds of stuff. These ones are just selling the drinks. But let's say uh, they've got a good map on the wall here. Let me show you the plan for today. So this is the northeastern corner of Hokkaido. That's where we slept yesterday, Abishiri City. And uh, today we're going to follow the coastline round and head up to the National Park of Five Lakes, which is up here. And then this road here is supposed to be one of the most beautiful in Japan. And then we're going to follow it down and then sleep somewhere down this eastern point here. Okay, first stop today, one hour and 42 minutes drive away. Left. Turn left. I know this isn't smell-o-vision, but if you could smell it, there's a lot of fish processing up here. We just pulled over in a bit of a panic. Look how we pulled over. But we pulled over because we just saw our first stalks and they're massive. They are massive. <laughs> this stopping for fuel is a good one. We've got a man to help us this time because we got really confused last time with the pump. Hey. <laughs> arigato! Oh, arigato! It's that side. We got a window cleaning service. Tomo <laughs> arigato! <laughs> With a step ladder. One seriously straight road. Is that the road? It looks like the road. Either that or there's a fire at the end with the smoke. There's like a straight <laughs> With no wind, it's going straight up vertically. But I don't think the Romans have been this far. They might have done. I've seen pizza here. <laughs> pizza? You've seen pizza. The Romans have been. Can you hear that jungle noise? Listen to that. Just seen a sign for a waterfall, so uh, we'll stop and check that out on the way. Oh, what a beautiful coastline. Obviously a touristy thing. You see lots of tour buses coming around Hokkaido. I'm not sure what's louder. The noise of the waterfall or the noise of the bugs? <laughs> Thank you. 
those are the bears that they have up here. We're going to see some bears maybe today. If we're lucky, we might see some. If the wildlife and nature gods are on our side. <laughs> Well, that's the first time I've ever seen spinning fish drying by the side of the road. Me too. <laughs> Outside 7-Eleven. We've just turned off the main road and we're heading now into the, uh, into the park. I've got my eyes peeled for bears, deer and foxes. So I'm hoping that we can uh, see something today, but nature's always unpredictable. You never know quite what you're gonna see. This area is definitely the ultimate Japanese wilderness experience. You can't get more wild than, uh, than up here. In fact, the Shiritoko National Parks area covers a whopping 609 square kilometers of densely covered wilderness. Actually looks like it's all been manicured because this type of bamboo or this, uh, yeah, I'm sure it's bamboo, yeah, it's only bamboo. grows to that height. It looks like uh, it's all been cut, but it hasn't. Wow, look at this. It's massive. <laughs> Okay, so we've arrived at the uh, National Park Centre. 500 yen for parking. So I think a lot of the big walkways, you actually have to have reservations. But I think if you're gonna do like a short one hour hike, then uh, you can do it yourself. So let's see if we can find some information. Okay, so there is a, uh, there's a walkway that you can, that you can go on. The walk walkways are a great way of protecting the landscape underneath so that they don't have to dig paths in. I'm um, grinning from ear to ear, <laughs> hearing the bugs and the nature. It is wild, it's isn't it? It's taking me back to our, like, our honeymoon and our family <laughs> holidays to Borneo. Borneo. They actually look like they've got electric fences on the side of the walkway. Is that to stop bears climbing up? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we're in lunch. You can't really get better nature than that, can you? And this is the wilderness of Japan. Nothing for miles. We're just saying it's interesting that uh, you can't walk around the lakes without booking a tour guide and going on a pre-booked tour uh, because it's dangerous because there are bears bears around but they don't know that we've just been up to the arctic ocean we've met grizzlies, we've met grizzlies and bears up in alaska and uh, and northern canada and what's making me chuckle is we're on a bear watching experience high above so we get the opportunity to see bears and there's people walking around with bear bells to scare them away. <laughs> Makes no sense. The sign here, this region was actually nominated as a World Heritage Site in 2005. And uh, looking at it, it is no wonder why. It's absolutely stunning, the views here. And over there, there is the Ishiko Lake. The first lake in the park as you enter. Yeah, there's a total of five lakes. Um, this walkway takes you down so you can see the first one. We just got an emergency alert on our but phone. I don't know what the emergency is. It's in is. Japanese. Well, nobody's panicking. Are we about to get an earthquake? Well, everyone's checking their phones. You can't worry about it because we don't even know what it is. Right. <laughs> okay. So we just asked them, we just showed them the emergency alert and they just sort of went, did that, so the earthquake thing, earthquake. but I can't, I can't feel it. So 
I did actually see online there is a waterfall about 20 minutes drive further down the peninsula and we just asked the uh, the guys in the office they did say it's a small dirt road no she used the word <laughs> off road but she hasn't seen Trudy so I think Obviously. we'll be okay I mean after Georgia and going to the Arctic Ocean I think we'll be all right yeah. it just might be a bit narrow okay there you go so this is the start of the uh, 20 minute drive 12 kilometers I mean, if we'd actually had a road like this when yeah. we were in Georgia... I was just thinking that. <laughs> we we would have been happy. Yeah, we would have been happy to have a road where... And there's no washboards either. There's not even like the death right. of Baja. Good morning. You're not scared of me at all, are you? Hey? Thanks for behaving for the camera. <laughs> that was a lovely moment. He just stood there and literally just looked at us. It's quite a drop down the side there, huh? Sun's come out. Look at that fence. See, that doesn't make you feel like you're in Jurassic Park. Yeah, T-Rex coming over any minute now. The trees parting in the distance. So yeah, it was a lovely, lovely drive down here. I'm pleased we did it. And uh, this waterfall is actually a hot waterfall. And historically, you can go uh, right up to the top and go in hot pools, but they've closed it. Um, and you can only do it from July onwards with a tour guide because I think people were injured by falling rocks off the uh, off the cliff face. But it's still very beautiful, and really we wanted to come down mainly just because of the drive because it's nice through the forest. Can we whack our hot falls? So they are very beautiful, and normally you can climb up, and uh, there's different different pools at different temperatures, and at the top. I think it's up to 30 degrees C. If you encounter a bear, do not run as it often triggers the bear's instinct to chase. We're wondering if that person there didn't take the advice or do it, and that's all that's left. Hey, bear! Okay, we've come back to the uh, to the main road and we're going up the Shire Toko Pass. Apparently, this road is going to turn into one of the most beautiful drives in Japan. I'm excited. Oh, that is potentially very controversial. So it's really hot today. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, it must be nearly 30 degrees, 25 degrees, but there's still snow by the side of the road here. That shows you how much snow they must have. That's just mad, but I'm so hot. That's a pretty impressive view of Trudy, isn't it? <laughs> so we've stopped at this viewing point. Wow. Now that's what I call a view. Look at that for a view. Do you feel on top of the world now? That is amazing. Absolutely stunning. Was a 
very epic drive and definitely worth doing if you come to Hokkaido. And in fact, we likened it to the top of the world highway in Canada, which was also one of our favorite drives. And that's it, we're back to the coastline and now we're gonna follow it down south east. So as we were driving south, I was looking out to sea. I could spot an island. And we're heading to the most easterly point of Japan. And I was thinking, what is that island? I don't know whether you can see it in the distance behind me, but that island is actually under Russian rule. Waking up to a landscape covered in dense fog, we started the final drive to Japan's most easterly point. It really was a remote area of Japan, and one that tourists rarely visit. Looking at the landscape, it reminded us of the final drive to Tuktoyaktuk, Canada's most northerly road, and the Arctic Ocean. So we've arrived at the most easterly point of Hokkaido. But it's not just the most easterly point of Hokkaido. This is in fact the most easterly point of Japan. The realization hit us. We'd finally arrived at the furthest point from the UK. It felt like we'd accomplished something. The halfway point of our around the world drive. Every day for the past three years, Trudy, our UK camper van, has been getting further and further away from home. But not anymore. From now on, each day we'll be getting one step closer to getting home and completing our around the world challenge. So from this point on, we're going home. Yay. It might take us a couple of years, but we're going home. <laughs> <laughs>